This is the land of Havilah, 2 Chronicles 2, verse 1. Now Solomon decided to build a house for Yahweh's name and a house for his kingdom. Solomon counted out 70,000 men to bear burdens, 80,000 men who were stone cutters in the mountains, and 3,600 to oversee them. Comment in verse 1, Solomon decided to build a house for Yahweh's name and a house for his kingdom, meaning one for Yahweh and one for himself, to live in and to conduct the official business of the kingdom. We find out Yahweh's house took seven years, 1 Chronicles 6, 38, and after that the palace took 13 years, 1 Kings 7, 1 and 9, 10. The palace was half the length of a football field, 1 Kings 7, 2, whereas the temple was slightly longer than a pro basketball court, 1 Kings 6, 2, so we can see why the palace took longer. The temple was on Mount Moriah, 2 Chronicles 3, 1, but the location of Solomon's house is a mystery. It would make sense to put the palace near the temple if possible. But back to the initiation of all of it, verse 3. Solomon sent to Huram, the king of Tyre, saying, As you dealt with David my father and sent him cedars to build him a house in which to dwell, so deal with me. Behold, I am about to build a house for the name of Yahweh my God, to dedicate it to him, to burn before him incense of sweet spices, for the continual showbread and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the set feasts of Yahweh our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. The house which I am building will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. But who is able to build him a house, since heaven and the heaven of heavens can't contain him? Who am I then, that I should build him a house, except just to burn incense before him? Now therefore send me a man skillful to work in gold and silver, in brass, in iron, and in purple, crimson, and blue, and who knows how to engrave engravings, to be with the skillful men who are with me in Judah and in Jerusalem, whom David my father provided. Send me also cedar trees, cypress trees, and algum trees out of Lebanon, for I know that your servants know how to cut timber in Lebanon. Behold, my servants will be with your servants, even to prepare me timber in abundance, for the house which I am about to build will be great and wonderful. Behold, I will give to your servants, the cutters who cut timber, 20,000 cores of beaten wheat, 20,000 baths of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of oil. Comment in verse 3, Tyre was a city of Lebanon. It was 100 miles north of Jerusalem on the coast of the Mediterranean. Their king Huram, also spelled Hiram, must be elderly by now because he helped build David's palace in Jerusalem long ago, in verse, as it said in verse 3. In verse 4, Yahweh's house will take the place of the tabernacle because it will be the one place for incense, showbread, and sacrifices to Yahweh. Yahweh commanded exactly what to sacrifice and when. There were the daily sacrifices, plus more sacrifices every Sabbath, every new moon, and on the feasts of Yahweh, including Passover, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Booths. All is laid out in Numbers 28 and 29 in the Law of Moses. Plus, the temple will be the place that Yahweh intends for all voluntary sacrifices to be given, Deuteronomy 12, 13, and 14, and it will house the Ark of the Covenant. In verse 5, Solomon isn't bashful about the God of Israel when he's writing to Hiram. He tells Hiram, quote, our God's greater than all gods, end quote. In verse 6, just to be sure Hiram's not confused, or Huram as, as the Chronicles call him, Solomon says, we call it Yahweh's house, but it won't be able to contain him because, quote, heaven and the heaven of heavens can't contain him, end quote. In verses 7, seven through 10, Solomon wants Huram to, to provide materials and skilled labor in exchange for wheat, barley, wine, and oil, which will turn out to be every, every year for 20 years, 1 Kings 5.11 and 9.10. If we do the math, that will be the equivalent of four semi-truckloads of wheat flour and 12 tanker truckloads each of barley, wine, and olive oil each year for 20 years, so 40 truckloads in all every year. That was Solomon's letter to Huram, coming up Huram's answer, verse 11. Then Huram, king of Tyre, answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon, Because Yahweh loves his people, he's made you king over them. Huram continued, Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, who made heaven and earth, 
who's given to David the king a wise son, endowed with discretion and understanding, who would build a house for Yahweh and a house for his kingdom. Comment verses 11 and 12, if Huram was being sincere and candid, he agreed with Solomon that Yahweh made heaven and earth, as he said in verse 12, and that Yahweh was greater than all gods. Hiram goes on, verse 13, Now I have sent a skillful man endowed with understanding of Huram my father's, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skillful to work in gold, in silver, in brass, in iron, in stone, in timber, and in purple and blue, in fine linen and in crimson, also to engrave any kind of engraving and to devise any device, that there may be a place appointed to him with your skillful men and with the skillful men of my Lord David your father. Now therefore the wheat, the barley, the oil, and the wine which my Lord has spoken of, let him send it to his servants. And we'll cut wood out of Lebanon as much as you need. We'll bring it to you in floats by sea to Joppa, and you shall carry it up to Jerusalem. Solomon counted all the foreigners who were in the land of Israel after the census with which David his father had counted them, and they found 153,600. He sent 70,000 of them to bear burdens, 80,000 who were stone cutters in the mountains, and 3,600 overseers to assign the people their work. Comment in verse 3, Huram writes to Solomon that he's already sent a skillful master craftsman by the name of Huram Abi in the original text, which means Huram like my father. So the craftsman is Huram son of Huram, which is coincidental because he's not related to the king. In verse 14, Huram Abi's father was from Tyre, but his mother was an Israelitess from the tribe of Dan, Dan being near Lebanon. This Huram Abi, this craftsman, is reminiscent of the divinely talented Bezalel, who supervised construction of the tabernacle, Exodus 31, 2. So once more, Yahweh is providing just the person for the job. In verse 16, King Huram will take responsibility for cutting and hauling timber out of the forests of Lebanon to the sea. Then he'll bind it into rafts and float it to Joppa on the Israelite coast, where Solomon's men will receive it and transport it to Jerusalem. Most likely, they'll cut it down to specifications on the coast before hauling it up to Jerusalem to make it lighter, and also so the sounds of construction won't be heard at the temple site. Quote, the house when it was under construction was built of stone prepared at the quarry, and no hammer or axe or any tool of iron was heard in the house while it was under construction. 1 Kings 6, 7. In verses 17 and 18, there's almost a repeat of verse 2. Solomon constructed conscripted 153,600 foreigners living in Israel for cutting stone and, quote, bearing burdens, end quote, while 3,600 of them supervised. In 1 Kings 5, Solomon also conscripted 30,000 unskilled laborers to assist in Lebanon. They went there in rotation 10,000 at a time, a month on and two months off. Second Chronicles 3 is next. If it doesn't come up automatically, please find it at landofhavila.net.